I had a good time at the next place. I heard that. Uh -huh. I managed to get to the, the to the Space Needle, folks, and Chef Jeff, Jeff Maxfield, who is the uh, the chef at the, the Space Needle, the Sky City at the Space Needle, he fixed us a pecan crusted goat cheese followed by a seared wild chinook salmon. And with that view on a beautiful sunny day and that quality of food, it was a treat indeed. It sounds fantastic. It was. Let's go. Enjoy. We're in the very extensive kitchen area of Sky City at the Space Needle with executive chef Jeff Maxfield. And Jeff is going to give us some wonderful ideas for a really fine, a different holiday treat. And it's going to be salmon. Salmon it is. And, and what are we going to do first here? Uh, we're actually going to do a pecan crusted goat cheese as an appetizer to start off this, this menu uh, with a little mountain huckleberry uh, reduction. Okay, let's get cooking here and see what we do first. This is a stainless steel pan. Mm -hmm. We're going to get the pan hot a little bit here. And uh, we're going to start with a little bit of sugar. And we're pretty much making a caramel is what this is. So we'll start with a little bit of water. Okay. Just enough to moisten the sugar a little bit. Mm -hmm. We want to dissolve the sugar, and then we'll put in a lemon juice. You know, there's a chemical reaction that happens with the lemon, and, and what it does is it keeps it keeps the sugar from crystallizing. So anybody that's made caramel at home and has had the sugar just turn into one solid lump yeah. in the pan, uh, you know, has been frustrated. It makes it easier to clean up as well. So that's a great hint. Half a lemon gets you out of that trouble, folks. Absolutely. So I'll put a little bit more sugar in here. Okay. So as it starts to dissolve, what we're going to do is wait for a caramel stage. And I try to kind of keep it down off the side of the pan. And what that does is just keep it from burning. Oh, that looks looking so good. All right. So as we're starting to get brown here, we want to go just a, that nice caramel, you know, like what you'd put over an ice cream, that color you of the bet. caramel that you'd put over ice cream. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit, and we're going to add the vinegar. OK. And the vinegar is going to just stop the cooking a little bit. It'll bubble up. And it almost turns into a crack there. You see how yeah, kind I of see it's, that. Yeah. It, there's some chunks there. You, that'll dissolve. Okay, and we're gonna add a little bit of our red wine. We've already taken the cork out of it. Okay. Now, Jeff, obviously you've done this often, you don't measure, but uh, will our people be able to know when they, when they use this recipe how much to put in, at least from the beginning? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've got about a cup. Uh, it's about a cup of sugar, uh, juice of half of a lemon, just enough water. There's water really just enough to soften the sugar and mm -hmm. to, to uh, dissolve the sugar. Uh, and then it's three cups of uh, red wine. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that all the way down until it's dry. And this is one shallot. And this just gives it a nice kind of savory onion flavor. So the star anise. Uh. And we're going to put one of these in. Now, you don't break those or anything. I don't break it. I like it just a, a very mild flavor. I don't, you know, I'm a, a big licorice fan, but too much is, too is, much is, is too a little much. too much. So the huckleberries, this is the juice that comes out of them. So we're going to just dump all that in. Huckleberries getting to be pretty popular again, too. Absolutely. Yeah, we've, you know, the Northwest is a great region for, for huckleberries. You know, I think the state of Idaho, that's their, uh, um, I want to say it's their, Kind of, uh, kind of goes along with our potatoes, huh? Plant. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So this sauce here is pretty much done. Um, you can always add just a little pinch of salt, and that you know gives us a little more savoriness to it. Okay. And uh, we'll just let that reduce. Once it's done, we can, if it needs a little bit more salt, we can always add it then. As that reduces, we're going to do uh, our breading for uh, okay. the goat cheese. We've got uh, two ingredients here. Uh, one is pecans. You can substitute any of your favorite nuts. Okay. Um, these are uh, just toasted and chopped. We, we're, for our purpose, we actually chop them a little bit finer. So just after they're toasted, let them cool off to where you can touch them. Mm -hmm. And then just rough, rough cut them with a knife. And we've actually got a, a mixture that's already done here. Okay. Uh, that has two to one. Uh, it's pecans and panko, which is a Japanese breadcrumb. I've got a little bowl here okay. uh, that we're going to crack our eggs into. And uh, this is going to be kind of act as the glue for everything to stick to it. Okay. And we'll just beat the eggs. Okay. So I've got goat cheese here, which is just a uh, 
This is a, a softened goat cheese. It comes in a nice little log shape, so it's real easy for us to cut it mm -hmm. into discs. Um, so we cut it just into a disc there. Three quarters of an inch thick. I mean, if it, this is enough to share between two or three people. So we season with a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're gonna go directly into the flour. Oh, okay. One of the tricks too is to have one wet hand and one dry hand so that you yep. don't have glue on both hands. Into the and egg. Into the egg. Okay, coat it real nice. And then we'll go into the breadcrumb mixture. So we'll go back into the egg mixture. And then again into the breadcrumb. So you want to get the, the oil right around uh, 300 degrees. You're pretty much looking for it to make some noise. With our, uh, our sauce here, what we do is we just make a nice little pile here in the center of the plate. Mm -hmm. And you can drag it if you want to. And just kind of want to move that goat cheese around a little bit. You don't want to let it sit in one spot. What we serve it with is a little salad uh, made up of a uh, little bit of wild arugula and then we mix it with a little bit of basil. So just pull the, the basil leaves. Um, two to one, usually I, I put a little bit more uh, arugula than basil. Okay. Okay. And we'll put a little bit of black pepper on there, a little bit of salt, and some of this olive oil. Just drizzle that on there just to give it a little bit of a, ah. of a nice sheen. So we've got a good little salad going on there. Mm -hmm. And our goat cheese should be just about done. So when I remove it, what I'll do is I'll remove it right into a towel to kind of take that extra sure. extra oil off of it. And you just pop that right there down in the in the nice puddle of the huckleberry there. A little salad here. It looks delicious, but look at the colors too for a, a, a beautiful oh, presentation on your table. These are Christini's. And there you have it. We'll put a little bit the rest of the salad, why not? It is crusty, and you it's have to crusty. go through it. Yeah. There you okay. are. Okay. And right on a crostini here, George. There we go. Okay. Hmm. That's fantastic. The huckleberries are a perfect taste for this. Nice little sweet sourness mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of compliments off this one, folks. You really are. It's beautiful, and beautiful presentation, and wonderful taste. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Let's go to the main dish now. We're talking wild king salmon. First thing for this dish, we're going to make a chanterelle mushroom flan. They don't get real dirty. Uh, they actually produce an insecticide that uh, distracts all the bugs and everything else, right. so you don't really get a whole lot of bugs. All right. So we want to leave them in pretty, pretty large chunks. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got our saute pan here, and uh, we're just going to add to that a little bit of olive oil, and we're gonna throw our chanterelle mushrooms in here. Uh, a little bit of pepper here. All we're looking to do here is just uh, saute them enough to, to soften them up. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're looking good. Okay, so we'll turn the heat off there. I always let them cool down just a little bit, just so that they uh, um, don't cook the egg as you put them into, a, into the cool mixture. We're gonna crack our eggs. There's six eggs, and we'll just mix that up. Beautiful. And to that, we have some milk here. And we're just making a custard mixture there. So as we're letting those chanterelles cool down just a tad, what we're gonna do is uh, chop up a little bit of fresh herb. All right. So I use thyme and chives, which are, are great with chanterelles. They kind of complement that that uh, woodsy, almost nuttiness that they have. So you can rough cut them. They're cut pretty small. Yeah, you want them to, to show up in the flan. There you go. Okay. And with our thyme, it's real simple with nice fresh thyme, just to grab it loosely and it'll come right off the stem for you. And you can just run your knife over it a couple times just mm -hmm. to kind of break them up a little bit. Re release those essential oils. Yeah. So we'll mix that up just a tad, and our chanterelle mushrooms are going to go right into that. Okay. This is looking better and better and better. Oh, yes. 
And we'll let that rest there for a moment. We use uh, aluminum dishes here. Yeah, you can fun. use a little creme brulee dish or something oven safe that you've got at home okay. uh, that's small. We try to do, you know, three to four ounce um, portion sizes for a person. So it's 350 uh, for about 25 minutes. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're not going to serve them in these containers, so that's why we've oiled them. Butter, you can use a little bit oh, of olive right oil. That, or if you have uh, like a Pam non-stick stick spray or yep. something like that, you can spray that in there. Um, and that just helps to let them release it. So we want to make sure we get some, some mushroom in the bottom of each one. Okay. And we'll just bring in a little bit more of this custard here. And any type of a casserole dish works really well. You just want to have something that's shallow enough to where you're not too far above the top of your dish that you're cooking in. We're going to add a little bit of warm water to that. Okay. And uh, just fill it up about halfway up the side of your dish. All right. And then we're going to wrap it with a little bit of foil tightly around the whole pan. Okay. And this is what we put in the oven for what, 25 minutes? 25 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to go right in this oven here. All right. While we're making the fondue here, uh, the first component of this is prepping your leeks. One of the tricky things about leeks is that they uh, have such tight little leaves on them yeah. that they trap sand and they grow yeah. in the dirt here. So little trick that we do, uh, we just cut them into half moon sizes here. We'll put it right into some cold water here. Ah, uh, that's the trick. And what'll happen, you wanna make sure there's enough water so that the leeks actually float. What happens is all the sand, which is a little bit heavier, heavier. so sinks to the bottom. Then we've got our nice clean leeks. Okay. I've just taken uh, a pound of bacon and uh, sliced it real thin like you would for bacon bits, mm -hmm. anything like that. And you're gonna just slowly render it down on, on a um, medium high heat. We're yeah. just gonna let it go until it just starts to turn, the fat's rendering. I drain a little bit of the grease. Okay. You know, it's certainly, uh, bacon fat is good, but not too now much. that has cooked down, but it's not crispy. It's not too crispy. If we were to let it just uh, cool down, it would certainly get crispy mm -hmm. on us. Yep. Um, but we'll reduce the heat a little bit, and we're going to add our leeks right to that pan. And it gets a nice onion flavor to it. It also gives a, a beautiful color to oh, it, too. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Presentation. That's right, that's right. A little bit of cracked black pepper. Okay. So this is the part where we're going to add flour, um, which makes our roux. We're going to build the roux. We've got some of the bacon fat in there. Um, so we'll just dust a little bit of flour there. About three tablespoons of flour. So we're going to use some milk. Okay. Uh, and we're going to just add that in slowly. Um, and it'll almost thicken almost immediately. And it'll, you know, we add it in slower uh, amounts just so that it, you know, we don't overload it all at once. Just continue to add it. Finish up with the milk. You know, and if, if it becomes a little thick on you, you know, don't, don't hesitate to add a little more liquid. You can even add water. Okay. So we're just about there, yep. and we're going to just finish it off with a touch of cream. All right. So one thing that we do to balance it out is add a little bit of lemon juice. So we're going to do a juice of, of uh, one lemon, and that just adds a little bit of a, a bright acidity to it. Okay. It's nice and thick now. Yes. Um, so I'll turn the heat off, and then this is when we add the Dungeness crab. Oh. And you just kind of break it up in little chunks, and you know, certainly, you know, nice little legs in there as well. So we'll add the rest of our chanterelles that we've saved. Okay. A little bit of salt and black pepper. So these will just start to uh, render down a little bit, and then once they're softened, We'll take our pea vines and just kind of tear them apart a little bit. All right. So what we'll start with, we've got a little bit of sauce here as well. Made up ahead of time. Okay. So make sure you get those nice chunks of crab meat in there. Absolutely. And we've got chanterelle and pea vines here. A 
So our yeah, flan, okay. see everything kind of floated up to the top. Yeah. So what you can do, and since we've sprayed and buttered it, mm -hmm. it pops right out. Oh, I love that. Okay. And then that just rests right there in a, like a little nest. Beautiful. Okay. Nice color contrast here. Oh, look at that, folks. Okay. So we've got our grilled wild salmon with a Dungeness crab and bacon fondue, uh, wild chanterelle mushroom uh, flan with some pea vines. As the great Julia Child used to say, bon appetit. That's beautiful. Thank bon you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you.